Friends, this past year has been crazy, hasn't it? I've traveled all over America, and gun owners know there's far more at stake in this election than just left versus right. There's a growing belief that this is a do or die fight for the soul of our country. Because after eight years of dishonesty, corruption, and failure, the America we know is becoming unrecognizable. Everything we believe in, everything we've always known to be good and right and true has been twisted, perverted, and repackaged to our kids as wrong, backwards, and abnormal. Can you imagine growing up in a country where everyone from movie stars to the president tells you to be suspicious of police officers? Who are our kids supposed to respect and admire? The media tells them Bruce Jenner's a national hero for transforming his body, while our wounded warriors, whose bodies were transformed by IEDs and rocket-propelled grenades, can't even get basic health care from the VA. We have college campuses teaching that your freedom of speech depends on the conformity of your opinion. In this moral vacuum, we fear for our children's future and we feel our freedom slipping away. In times like these, Americans turn to the places they trust the most. For moral guidance, they turn to their churches. For mutual support, they turn to their families. And for a champion who will bring the fight to those who want to destroy our country, they turn to the National Rifle Association of America. We are the toughest, best organized, and most respected defender of American values. And tens of millions of our fellow Americans look to us for leadership. They're realizing what we've known for years, that dishonesty, corruption, and contempt for ordinary Americans, it hits a breaking point. And that breaking point is now. If we don't show up to the polls in force this November, we will witness the end of individual freedom in this country. That's not hyperbole, it's the truth. But the first thing we have to do is get together. Now is the time to unite. If your preferred candidate dropped out of the race, it's time to get over it. We all know people who won't be voting. We all know people who won't be voting. Here's one, Adam Brown, a hero who gave his life so we can live in a free country. We owe it to Adam and people like him to get off our rear ends and get in the arena. Now, were there differences between the candidates for the nomination? Of course. Are there valid arguments in favor of some over others? Sure. Will any of it matter if Hillary Clinton wins in November? No. Not one bit. Let me ask you a simple question. If you're at home and someone kicks in your door and tries to murder you and your family, should you have the right to defend yourself with a firearm? Yeah. I'm not talking about in your car, or at work, or McDonald's. And I don't care if your gun's an AR or a pump action shotgun or a revolver. I don't care if it holds 30 rounds or if it's a single shot. The question is, should you have the basic right to use a firearm to protect yourself from a murderer in your own home? Yeah. Friends, that question will be answered for all of us this November because the next president's first decision will be who to nominate as Justice Scalia's replacement on the U.S. Supreme Court. His majority opinion in the Heller case set legal precedent for what we've always known. Of course we have an individual right, and of course we have the right to use it to defend ourselves and our families. Thank God we won that case. We should have won it nine to nothing, but we won it five to four. And after Justice Scalia's death, we don't have five votes anymore. Our majority on the Supreme Court's gone. Justice Ginsburg says she looks forward to a future wiser court coming back and overturning our victory. It's that simple and it's that clear. The next president chooses the fifth justice, so the Second Amendment is on the ballot this November. I bet you're wondering where Hillary stands, right? 
Well, let's hear it straight from the horse's mouth. I'm sorry about that. That was the wrong clip. I apologize. Show the, show the next one. Here again, the Supreme Court is wrong on the Second Amendment. And I am going to make that case every chance I get. So I will need your help on that. The Supreme, the Supreme Court is wrong on the Second Amendment. Think about that for a second. The Supreme Court said you have the right to protect your life against a murderer in your own home, and Hillary Clinton says they got it wrong. That's how little she values our freedom and how little she values our lives. Here's what will happen if she gets elected. She'll put a radical anti-gun activist in Scalia's seat as soon as she can. The gun control groups will take a Second Amendment case to the Supreme Court where five justices will overturn what millions of Americans have fought and died to defend, the basic human right of self-defense. And as soon as the ruling clears, states like California, New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut will ban the manufacture and ownership of entire classes of firearms overnight. Every gun store in those states will be out of business. Every gun range will be shuttered. Hundreds of thousands of people will lose their firearms and lose their jobs. And as bad as that sounds, it's just the beginning. It ends with no right to own a gun in your home anywhere in America, period. Now, of course, the elites will still be protected. You know, for all their talk about the evils of firearms, they sure love their armed security, don't they? For 20 years, Hillary Clinton hasn't taken a walk, a nap, or a bathroom break without a good guy with a gun there to protect her. And as long as she lives, as long as she lives, she'll never have to dial 911. Yet she wants us to surrender our firearms and our freedom in return for a false promise of government-provided security, she will never rely upon herself. To Hillary, it's simple. She's special, and we're not. She's smart, and we're dumb. She wants us to live in a place where only law enforcement has guns, and everything is free. Free meals, free health care, free education. Well, Hillary, that place does exist, and you just might get to live there. It's called prison. If any of us had done what she did, we'd be in jail for a long time. But as dishonest and corrupt as she is, Counting on Barack Obama's Justice Department to win this election for us is simply not a strategy. We have to defeat her because America can't survive eight years of her policies. Her tenure as Secretary of State will be remembered by ISIS rising and the world burning. Her willingness to turn her back on the heroes stationed in Benghazi should disqualify her from even being mentioned as a Commander in Chief. And her disgusting lie to the fallen heroes' families should permanently end her political career. But unfortunately, it hasn't. Friends, let me say this. Hillary Clinton has a legitimate chance to be the next president as long as people like us stay home, sit on the sidelines. And you know what? We're giving her reason for optimism these days. She looks at all the discord and division and start shopping, for online, shopping online for his or her twin beds for the White House. <laughs> so, my mother's here, sorry about that, Mom. So the next time your friends tell you they're not voting because their guy lost, tell them what's at stake. Ask them if they believe they have the right to use a gun in their home to protect themselves from a murderer because that's the question that will be answered for all of us this election. Every gun owner needs to know the truth about what she'll do as president. Please watch. I am here to tell you I will use 
every single minute of every day, if I'm so fortunate enough to be your president, looking for ways that we can save lives, that we can change the gun culture. Every single minute of every day. Here's a novel idea. Instead of spending every minute trying to take our guns, how about spending every minute defending the Constitution you swore to uphold? Or how about spending every minute trying to kill terrorists so they don't kill us? How about spending every minute taking the handcuffs off our soldiers from BS rules of engagement so they can get the job done? Or better yet, don't worry about it. Because from now until November, the five million men and women of the National Rifle Association will spend every minute working to make sure you never get that opportunity. You want to turn this election into a do or die fight over the Second Amendment? Bring it on. If you want to go, if you want to go in the inner cities and lie about gun control being the answer to violent crime, then bring it on. We'll tell them how your husband dropped prosecutions of federal gun crimes, how Obama followed suit, and how you'll do the same. You fight to give voting rights, voting rights to violent felons and crack dealers, we fight for the innocent people they terrorize. Yeah. Hillary, you're a corrupt politician who will say anything to get elected. We're law-abiding Americans who tell the truth and aren't scared of you or anyone else. We love our country and the freedoms that make us great. And we're gonna fight for the America we believe in. But that fight starts right now. If we wait until November, we will lose everything. So challenge every gun owner you know. If they haven't joined the NRA, they need to join now. If they don't know what's at stake, they need to know now. This is a fight for our freedom. We're not subjects. We're the National Rifle Association of America. We're born to fight, we're born to do this. You wanna take our guns? Get ready, Hillary. Pack a lunch and give it a try. We've been here for 145 years. You know where to find us, and we're not going anywhere. Thank you very much. Thank you. Every time our next speaker's been called upon to defend our Second Amendment freedoms, he's been there. Growing the NRA membership from one to five million. Beating back anti-gun proposals from presidents, from Congress, from governors. He's taking them all on, and he knows how to win. Ladies and gentlemen, Please welcome the CEO of your National Rifle Association, Wayne LaPierre. Thank you, Louisville. Thank you very much. Boy, I'll tell you, it's great to be here to celebrate our freedom and those American values that we all hold dear. Hey, I'm excited to hear Donald Trump. Are you? He's going to be out here in just a few minutes. Let me ask you another question. Are you ready to win this election and take our country back? Come on, let me hear you. You're ready to send Hillary into retirement? Yeah. Or maybe an orange jumpsuit. You know, all across this country, everywhere I go, people come up to me and they say this. They say, Wayne, I've never been more worried about my country than right now. And they say it, not with anger, but they say it with sadness in their eyes. Not because they fear that something is going wrong, 
but because they know something has gone wrong. You know what I'm talking about. You feel it in your heart. Our core values, our freedom, is eroding and slipping away. You're here in this room today, right now, because you care about the America we all know and that we all cherish. And you're here because you're worried that our country and what it stands for is disappearing. In this room, we still see the America that we have always loved. We still see the freedoms that have always made America the greatest nation on earth. We in this room, we are America. We, we are the police officers who patrol neighborhoods, and we're the firefighters in this room who run toward the fire, the servicemen and women who have answered the call, the doctors and the nurses who heal, the farmers and grocers who feed, the construction workers, the factory workers, the auto workers, and the tradesmen who keep America running every day. We are the teachers of our children and the leaders in our churches, and we're the volunteers in our communities. Americans, all bound together by a common, noble cause, the individual freedom bestowed to each of us at our birth. We at the NRA embrace and hold dear what makes us uniquely American. Family, responsibility, patriotism, mutual respect, honesty, civic duty. These values are still alive in this room right now and when in the hearts of millions of Americans just like us all over this country. But there are other rooms, rooms where the America that we see is no longer visible and no longer wanted. Rooms where our America is being transformed by the political and media elites at the highest levels. In rooms at the White House, political elites are changing our country one policy disaster at a time. Failed border policies, failed education policies, failed economic and tax policies, failed health care policies, failed energy policies, failed foreign policies, failed criminal justice policies, and failed defense policies. And together, they're shredding the very fabric of our country and transforming America into an America you won't even recognize. To carry out that transformation and finish the job, there are rooms where hand-picked superdelegates have rigged the election and circumvented voters to coronate Hillary Rodham Clinton into the White House. It's a dirty inside game. It's a corrupt system. But no one should be surprised. Corruption has followed Hillary Clinton almost her entire life. And so is failure. From her room at the State Department, Clinton's history is littered with failures. The 13 hours of Benghazi, all of Libya on fire, Egypt on fire, Syria on fire, Iraq on fire, a nuclear Iran, a brazenly emboldened Russia, an expansionist China, a nuclear North Korea testing ICBMs capable of reaching the United States of America while the Obama-Clinton administration slashed America's military. All in the face of a scourge of radical Islamic terrorism that Hillary won't even name. Under Hillary's watch, the world has become ever more dangerous. All while Hillary attacks our fundamental right to survive and protect ourselves by eliminating our Second Amendment right of self-defense. If she could, Hillary would ban every gun, destroy every magazine, 
run an entire national security industry right into the ground and put your name on a government registration list. If she gets her hands on the Supreme Court and stacks it with just one more justice, every total gun ban she dreams, every confiscation scheme that she craves will stand up in her court and we'll all be kissing our Second Amendment freedom goodbye. Folks, I'm not kidding. If she gets just one Supreme Court nomination, Hillary's court will hold that the Second Amendment is the government right, not an individual right, and you can kiss your guns goodbye. That's not the America that we inherited. That's not the America that we want for our children. It won't happen overnight, but it will begin on her first night. She ignores the simple and hard truth that in this room, we all know, the truth that if God forbid a terrorist should enter this room, he would learn firsthand that the best way for law-abiding Americans to defend their lives, the surest way to stop a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. You know it. There's no limit as to how far the elites will go to put Hillary into the White House. They're even allowing convicted felons the right to vote, including violent rapists and murderers. Sounds outrageous, but it's true. The Democratic-led Maryland General Assembly did it for 44,000 ex-cons. In Virginia, Democratic Governor Terry McAuliffe, Hillary's longtime bag man, did it for 206,000 convicted felons. Tentacles of the Clinton machine are out registering those felons right now. They're releasing them, and then they're registering them. Heck, when they sign their release papers, they might as well, at the prison door, be standing there, give them a Hillary Clinton bumper sticker. It's unbelievable. There are also rooms at CNN and NBC and other networks, rooms where the media elites conspire to tell us not what the news is, but how we should think. They hold up lies as truth, thinking that we all can't tell the difference. They think Americans all over the heartland of this country are stupid. Do they think we can't see their tone? Do you think we can't see their inflection? Do we think they can't see their agenda? Do they think we can't see that? I've always said that one of America's greatest vulnerabilities is the failure of a national news media to provide a level playing field for the truth. And Hillary, she'll be their candidate. Not because Americans want her, but because the political and media elites have decided that they do. Even if Hillary survives her primary, and by that, I mean her FBI primary. Yeah, that's the real one. Even if she survives, is she really the type of person we want to lead America? Despite all that, the elites have huddled in rooms in Washington, in New York, San Francisco, and Hollywood, and cooked the nomination for Hillary. On Wall Street, They'll pay you $250,000 a pop to talk in those rooms. Well, maybe not you, me, but if you're Hillary Rodham Clinton, you can make a fortune talking in those rooms, and she did. There's no sense of public service in Hillary's behavior. There's only personal greed, lust for power, and shocking arrogance. It's It's how she's able to look you in the eye with a straight face and deliberately lie about her attempts to hide her official emails, destroyed records, a personal server, deleted emails, illegal handing of classified documents. But here's the thing. 
you know what all of America is saying around their dinner table? And I bet every one of you in this room have said the exact same thing around your dinner table. They're saying, if that were me, I'd already be in prison. Well, Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton have been able to ignore us so far, but they will not be able to ignore us on Election Day. In November, we the people get the last word. Just a few weeks ago, Hillary said that when someone shows you who they are, believe them. Ah, we believe you, Hillary. We see you and we know you. We know a Hillary Clinton White House would be ground zero for a massive attack on our freedom. It'd be a revolving door and cash register for every Michael Bloomberg and George Soros and every gun ban group in the world. It would be a haven for all the Hollywood elites who plot the destruction of our Second Amendment while never acknowledging for a split second that they're the ones teaching America irresponsible use of firearms. A Clinton White House would be a cesspool for NBC, ABC, and CBS elitists to plan programming and orchestrate interviews to bombard the airwaves against our freedom. It would be a White House that would put the full weight of a weaponized IRS, ATF, EPA, Interior Department, and every other federal agency behind attacks against groups and people they don't like, while ignoring the real problems facing our nation. We're felons with guns, criminal gangs with guns, and drug dealers with guns are getting away with murder literally in places like Chicago and Detroit and beyond. We're the full weight of existing federal enforcement of federal firearms laws is absent. A Clinton White House would be a dangerous extension of the Obama White House. And where has this White House put its full weight? In the toilet, in bathrooms in North Carolina and school districts all over our country. You know, I remember when the University of North Carolina used to think Duke was their biggest problem. <laughs> now it's Loretta Lynch. Now, but seriously, think about that. Rising ISIS attacks, terrorism in Europe, innocent children being slain in cities by murderers, the White House refuses to take off the streets before they kill, ever-growing serious threats to our nation, and the president's biggest concern is school bathrooms? That is what a Clinton White House would look like and more. Every State of the Union address, every carefully staged press conference and public event, Hillary would pull out all the stops in seizing and destroying all the freedoms and values we care about most. If you think the Obama White House and Ben Rhodes lying to the American people about Iran and laughing about it was bad? Just wait until Hillary Clinton's spin doctors get a hold of the media. If that happens, it's game over for everyone in this room and everything that we all care about. It's a stark future, dark. But there's another future out there, another possible America the one we want for our children. It's the one we want them to inherit. In a few minutes, you'll hear from a man who offers a very different White House and a far more hopeful nation. The American dream, enduring freedom. We in this room, we are America's best hope. And this is our moment. In all of history, there's always been a time and a place when patriots stand up and rise up against the decree of the elites and shout, no more, get your hands off my freedom. That time and place is now. We stand together. We stand 
and we fight like hell for freedom. The revolution to take America back starts here. It starts on this day, and by God, we will elect our next president. We will save our freedom, and America truly will be great again. Thank you very much. Let's go save freedom. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Wayne. Are you as fired up as I am? Yeah. All right. Well, let's get going. Friends, think about this. If Hillary Clinton is elected in November and serves two terms, she'll be president until 2025. The damage that would be done by her policies and her Supreme Court picks will destroy individual freedom and therefore destroy the America we all love. We cannot let that happen. We have to unite, and we have to unite right now. So on behalf of the thousands of patriots in this room and the five million NRA members across this country and the tens of millions of who, of who support us, I'm officially announcing the NRA's endorsement of Donald Trump for president. Ladies and gentlemen, the next president of the United States, Donald Trump. Thank you very much. This is uh, amazing. I did not know that. I knew I was doing well, but I did not know that. And I've been a member for a long time, and my boys are members, and they're much better shooters than I am. I'll tell you, they know more about guns than any. I don't know, there might be two or three people in this room, but believe it or not, not many. So to get the endorsement, believe me, is a fantastic honor. And And I just said to Wayne, and I just said to Chris, I will not let you down. Remember that. I will not let you down. And, you know, I wrote a few remarks, and I'm going to actually read them because we go into a little detail, but I will tell you that Hillary Clinton, and, you know, I call her crooked Hillary because all you have to do is read any newspaper you want. But Hillary Clinton wants to abolish the Second Amendment. Just remember that. We're not talking about change it. She wants to abolish the Second Amendment. So we're not going to let that happen. I can tell you that right now. We're going to preserve it. We're going to cherish it. We're going to take care of it, okay? You know, they keep chipping away. They talk about the magazines. They talk about the bullets. Uh, we're going we're gonna to take care of it. You know, um, a couple of things before I give you some more detailed remarks. I, I feel... Uh, really happy with what's going on. You know, the Fox poll came out three days ago, and in the Fox poll, I'm leading Hillary, 41 to 44. 44. And last night, Rasmussen, which is a highly respected poll, came out. Trump, 42. Crooked Hillary Clinton, 37. So we're doing well. Now, with all that, we have a long way to go. But if you get every one of your friends to go vote, because there's a big difference. You know, on a lot of the things, there's a difference. And some are subtle, some are big. And by the way, we're in Kentucky. We're going to put the miners back to work before I forget about that. We're going to put the miners. We just left. And, and I also won Kentucky, so I love Kentucky. I used to work in Cincinnati for two summers. I worked in Cincinnati doing a job with my father. And I loved, I loved Cincinnati, and I'd come over the line, and I'd be in Kentucky. You wouldn't be, you'd be surprised how much I know about Kentucky. But uh, it's, it's an amazing place. But I said when I won New York, 
because we won New York in a landslide, and then Pennsylvania and Maryland, and we won everything. We were winning everything. Uh, we won Connecticut, Delaware, Rhode Island. And then we went to West Virginia, and boy, did I win. Did we do well in West Virginia. Wow. But all landslides, we won in all of the states I mentioned and more, every single county in every single state. That's called a victory. And we won by massive percentages in the 60s and some in the 70s. And then, of course, we went to Indiana. As you know, that was going to be, that was going to be the firewall for the other side. And it turned out to be a massive victory for us again. It didn't hurt that Bobby Knight came out and said, I want Trump to win. That didn't hurt. If, if you're in Indiana and Bobby Knight endorses you, that's an, I guess that's about as good as it gets. So I just want to say that I've been watching what's going on, and I've been looking at airplanes getting blown up in the air and lots of bad things happening. It's just not the same. And we're going to bring it back, and we're going to bring it back to a real place where we don't have to be so frightened, where we don't have to be so afraid. And you know what's happening in the schools, and you know what's happening everywhere. We're going to bring it back, and you folks are going to be so happy, and you're going to be so proud of your country again. Just remember. <laughs> Bernie Sanders, who I'm sure you all love, he did say one thing that was very interesting. He said that Hillary Clinton is unqualified to be the President of the United States. And he said that, and it, it's just, you know, one of those things. He said she suffers from bad judgment, and she does. You look at so many of her decisions have been bad. So I think we're going to do really, really well, and I look forward to it. I actually look very forward to the debates. I've loved the debates. I don't know. I never debated before, and all of a sudden I have all these debates. And that was a big question mark in my mind. I mean, how will I do in debates? I'm debating people that were on their national debating teams and all of these top debaters. But they never had people interrupting them every other word they'd say. You're a liar. You're a liar. And they're trying to speak, and they can't speak. You would have done the same. I know a lot of the audience. You would have done the same. So I just want to give this, and I want to really, it's so important to me. I wrote it down. And again, my sons have been members of the NRA for many, many years, and they're incredible. They have so many rifles and so many guns, sometimes even I get a little bit concerned. I said, that's a lot, <laughs> okay? But I will tell you, they are, they know so much about it, and really, they're surrogates. They go around and speak, and every time they speak to a gun organization or a club, or the, people call me and they say, you boys are great boys, and boy, do they know their business. So. Uh, it's one of those things, and that's the way we want it. And, you know, I mention uh, so often, we talk about Paris, or we talk about San Bernardino, and nobody had guns. You know, Paris is probably, in the world, the toughest place to have a gun. The toughest. France, generally, but Paris in particular. And when these thugs walked in, thugs, you know, the press used to call them masterminds, right? The mastermind. We're looking. I said, that's why people are joining. That's why they're coming in, because they're using the word mastermind. Not mastermind, thugs. In fact, I call them the guy with the dirty cap. Remember the white cap? And it was filthy dirty. This was the mastermind. And actually, the press has stopped using the term. They're very dishonest people, among the most dishonest I've ever met. But they actually stopped using the term mastermind because they use that term. And then they wonder why our youth is going and fighting for ISIS. They don't even know what they're fighting for. But I think it's gotten a lot better from that standpoint. But if you look at Paris, 130 people killed, hundreds of people still in the hospital, just horribly wounded, can never be the same horribly wounded. And these guys came in, boom, boom, you over here, boom. And they just stood there and just shot everybody. No guns on the other side, folks. If you would have had guns on the other side, if I took a couple of these folks in here, some especially wearing the red caps, make America great again, I promise there wouldn't have been 130 people killed and hundreds of people lying in the hospital to this day. There might have, it might not have happened. Because if they knew there were guns in the room, it might not have happened. But if it did, you would have had bullets going in the opposite direction. And believe me, the carnage would not have been the same by any stretch of the imagination. And I tell, thank you, I tell the same story on San Bernardino. Here's two people. I guess she radicalized him. Who knows? 
Who knows? It's a mess. We're in a mess, folks, a mess. Radical Islamic terrorism. We have a president doesn't mention the words, doesn't want to talk about it. And if you don't want to talk about it, you're never going to solve a very big problem. And we're talking a worldwide problem. We're not talking here. We're not talking Kentucky. We're talking all over the world. This is a problem. And we have a president doesn't want to mention the name. You have San Bernardino, 14 people. They worked with these two. They worked with them. They gave them a baby shower. They had a baby. The people they worked with gave them a baby shower. They walked in, no guns on the other side. They had the guns, and they killed 14 people, many wounded, many in the hospital to this day, but they wounded many. But they killed 14 of their co-workers, and the co-workers thought they were friends. So there's something going on. Now, I tell you again, same story. If we had guns on the other side, it wouldn't have been that way. I would have, boom. If we had guns on the other side, it wouldn't have been that way. And then you have the gun-free zones. The gun-free zones, that's real. We had a case, you know, the, about a year and a half ago was the first I really heard of this. And where you had the five military people, great people. One was a master marksman, a master with anything he touched having to do with guns, weapons, anything he touched. And they were told, this is on a military base, folks, on a military base. They were told, put your guns away, got to put your guns. These are, you know, soldiers. These are people that are representing us. These are the top of the line. These were five great, brave, incredible soldiers. Put your guns away. So their guns are locked up, put in a different area of the place. And this whack job walks in and starts shooting them, killed all five of them. Gun-free zones. We're getting rid of gun-free zones, okay? I can tell you. We're getting rid of them. Thank you. Thank you. That wasn't part of my speech, I must be honest with you. I don't know. I don't know, maybe I shouldn't read you what I have here, but in fact, if I would have known teleprompters, I would have used them. I've started to use them a little bit. They're not bad. You never get yourself in trouble when you use a teleprompter. <laughs> you know, the problem is it's too easy. We have a president who uses teleprompters. It's too easy. We should have non-teleprompter speeches only when you're running for president. You find out about people. <laughs> the other way, you don't find out about anybody. So, the Second Amendment is under a threat like never before. Crooked Hillary Clinton is the most anti-gun, anti-Second Amendment candidate ever to run for office. And as I said before, she wants to abolish the Second Amendment. She wants to take your guns away. She wants to abolish. Just remember that. The NRA and the late hero, and he was a great guy, Charlton Heston, who many of you knew. I met him a few times. He was an incredible guy. Did battle with the Clintons to protect our Second Amendment. The NRA has led the fight time and time again to protect our fundamental freedoms. This is an amazing group. I'll tell you, Chris and Wayne and all of the people, and I've gotten to know a lot of these are incredible people, and they really believe this isn't like a job. They really, really believe. And we're all lucky to have people like that, I will tell you. Really lucky. Of course, if they didn't endorse me, maybe I wouldn't say that. I, I would. Hillary Clinton wants to reverse the Supreme Court decision, D.C. versus Heller, upholding the right to keep and bear arms. Hillary said the Supreme Court is wrong on the Second Amendment. That's bad. That's like what she said about the miners. We're going to put the miners and the mines out of business. Then she goes, right? Then she goes to, oh, boy, I'll tell you, West Virginia, how were they? I hate to say I won Kentucky, but I won West Virginia by even more. I really, but of course, she made that statement after I had already won Kentucky. We're going to win them all. We're going we're gonna to win them all. We're going to win them all. If Hillary gets to appoint her judges, and this is really important, look, Defense is number one. We have to protect our country. Defense, economies, all important. everything's important. But 
Without defense, we don't have a country. And our military, as you know, it's being decapitated. What they're doing to our military is incredible. I saw over the weekend a, a documentary on our, you know, our, our great airmen. And these are people that are flying our jets, and they're running out of parts for our fighter jets. And these are fighter pilots. These are incredible men. And they're going to junkyards, plain graveyards, they call them, where the planes are. They're graveyards, where the old planes and they're taking parts off. They're cannibalizing the planes. They're taking parts off the planes. And they're putting them onto the jets. And I'm saying, is this the United States? Why don't we have new equipment? And a man got up, great guy, looked as good or better than Tom Cruise. And you know what I'm talking about, because that was a great movie. And, and he said, you know what? I've been in this for 20 years, and it used to be so incredible. And now it's like a different world. The equipment the way it's maintained, everything. It's like a different world. And I just have to say, just to interrupt what I'm going to be talking about, I have to say, we're going to make our military bigger and better and stronger than ever before, and nobody, nobody is going to push us around. Nobody. Nobody. Thank you. And by the way, as part of that, we are going to take care of our great veterans, and I have to tell you, the proper way, the proper way. All right, thank you, everybody. Thank you. If Hillary gets to appoint her judges, you know, one of the biggest and most important reasons to win this time, it's very unusual. Sometimes you get no judges to appoint. Sometimes you go for years and there's no judges. Probably there'll be a minimum. You have Scalia, who was one of the greats. Well, his position's up. Great. He was great. But you have Scalia, so you have one before you even start. Assuming, and I'm sure that Mitch and the guys are going to be able to hold out, I have no doubt about it, because we don't want anybody taking that slot. But you have Scalia, and you'll probably have three. It could be four. And it could even be five judges. So I think in terms of — and we're talking about a four-year period. And, of course, we intend to be there for eight years. But we'll make it so good in four, you'll probably say, you don't need to do it any longer, Mr. President. <laughs> but — but I, I can't stress in any stronger fashion, whoever the next president is going to appoint from three to five judges. And if — it's Hillary or whoever, assuming she's allowed to run, because you know what? What she did with her emails is so criminal, is so dishonest, is so shocking that she shouldn't be allowed to run, but it looks like they're going to let her run. And that's okay with me, because really, I do want to run against her. I have to be honest with you. So if she gets to appoint her judges, she will, as part of it, abolish the Second Amendment. And I have to say, uh, that would be, in my opinion, that's what she's going to go for. And it's a little like she did with the coal miners. She said about, you know, she's going to put the coal miners, she's going to put the mines out of business. Then she went to West Virginia, and she said, oh, well, I tried to retract. You know, she tried to retract. It didn't work out too well for her. She got really beaten badly. Hillary wants to disarm vulnerable Americans in high-crime neighborhoods, whether it's a young single mom in a Florida or a grandmother in Ohio, Hillary wants them to be defenseless, wants to take away any chance they have of survival. And by the way, you have men and you have women sitting in an apartment, and outside is tremendous crime, tremendous crime of all kinds, and they need to be protected. And you know the only way they're going to be able to protect themselves. And if you take that gun away from them, it's going to be a very unfair situation. And that's why we're going to call her Heartless Hillary, we can do without that. I'd ra I like, somehow I like crooked Hillary better. I put forth, and you probably saw it a few days ago, I put forth a list of judges who will protect and defend all of our freedoms, including the Second Amendment. The judges will follow the Constitution, and these were all highly vetted, the Federalist Society, Heritage, some great references from Jeff Sessions, a fantastic man, from Mitch and from a whole group of people. And we put down 
11. I'll be adding some additional names over a period of the next month or so, sometime prior to the convention. Hope you can all go to the convention. Hope you can come. And we're going to be putting some uh, additional names in. I think you'll be very happy with them. But it's, got, it's been reviewed incredibly well. People love these people. And I thought I'd do that because I really think it brings the party together. It really is going to, I mean, the effect it's had is incredible because they weren't sure, will Trump appoint this one, that one? How will the judges be? Such an important thing. So I put together the list with some incredibly important organizations and highly respected, and everybody's really happy. You've seen we've gotten A-plus reviews on that. Uh, now, I'd like to call for Hillary Clinton to put together a list also, okay? <laughs> Let her put together a list. Because I'd like to see what that list consists of. And you will see, it's day and night, okay? Day and night. And it will not be good for the people in this room. And it won't be good, by the way, for the people of our country, most importantly. So, Americans use guns to defend themselves against violent crime more than a million times a year. Okay, more than a million times a year. And they want to take them away. Heartless hypocrites like the Clintons want to take this and they want to get rid of guns, and yet they have bodyguards that have guns. So I think that in addition to calling for them to name judges, we'll also call them and let their bodyguards immediately disarm. Okay? No, they should immediately disarm. And let's see how good they do. Let's see how they feel walking around without their guns on their bodyguards. In the meantime, nobody else can have the guns, right? President Obama tried to take the guns from law-abiding Americans, but has reduced prosecutions of violent criminals who use guns. President Obama is even releasing violent criminals from the jails, including drug dealers and those with gun crimes. And they're being let go by the thousands, by the thousands. Many of these are also, I'm sure you're not going to be surprised to hear this, illegal immigrants. President Obama pushed for changes to sentencing laws that release thousands of dangerous drug trafficking felons and gang members who prey on civilians. And I want to tell you, I've really learned a lot about the border. In fact, two weeks ago, you probably saw 16,500 Border Patrol agents endorsed Donald Trump. And we've gotten great endorsements. To have the endorsement from NRA today and to have the endorsement from the Border Patrol agents. And I was talking to them. These are incredible people that want to do their job. That's why they're endorsing me. They could just sort of, you know, they're told to stand back. Don't do it. They want to do their job. These are incredible people. It's the first time they've ever endorsed a presidential candidate and 16,500, so I'm really honored by that. This is Hillary Clinton's agenda, too, to release the violent criminals from jail. She wants them all released. She wants people released that you wouldn't want to walk on the street with, you wouldn't want to look at. And, you know, whether it's Kate in San Francisco, you see what happened there, or Jamil, I've become great friends with his father. Jamil was shot in the face three times by somebody that wasn't supposed to be here. Or, and I always say this because this was tragic, a 65-year-old veteran, a woman who was a great woman, raped, sodomized, and killed by an illegal immigrant, wasn't supposed to be here. We're going to straighten it out. And by the way, this doesn't have to do with guns, per se, but maybe it has to do with a lot of other things. We're going to build the wall. It's going to be a great wall. We're going to have borders again. People are going to come into the country, but they're coming into the country legally, folks. They're coming in legally. We're going to keep our borders open, and I'll tell you, but they're going to be open when people come in legally. Now, Hillary wants to just keep them open. Anybody can come across, and that's what's been happening. And the crime is violent and a lot. And lots of other things are happening with the drugs pouring across. So. She's putting the most vulnerable Americans in jeopardy, and this is a risk that we can no longer afford. We've had enough. I think we've had enough. Wouldn't you say we've had, like... <laughs> in trying to overturn the Second Amendment, Hillary Clinton is telling everyone and every woman, 
living in a dangerous community, that she doesn't have the right to defend herself. So you have a woman living in a community, a rough community, a bad community, sorry, you can't defend yourself. That is so unfair, and that is so egregious. And I'll tell you what, my poll numbers with women are starting to go up. I never thought of it. This should really lift them up, right? <laughs> starting to go up. I will say, my poll numbers with men are through the roof. But I like women more than men. Come on, women, let's go. Come on. And most people know that about me. Most people know that. This is the most basic human right of all, but Hillary wants to strip it away and strip it away from women and all others. Hillary Clinton will release violent criminals from jail, more so than even Obama. She has a more open policy than Obama, if that's possible, and put innocent Americans at risk. I'm going to put criminals behind bars and guarantee that law-abiding Americans have the right to self-defense, 100 percent. Thank you. Thank you. There are 13 million right-to-carry permit holders in the United States. I happen to be one of them. In the past, nobody knows that. Boy, would I surprise somebody if they hit Trump. If, if, I, wasn't, if I wasn't surrounded by, like, the largest group of Secret Service people, who, by the way, are fantastic people, and our police are fantastic, fantastic people, we have to give a standing ovation to our police. We have to. They are fantastic people. Amazing. They do such a great job. They are so unfairly treated. But they know, and they know how the people feel about them. Thank you, that's great. In the past 30 years, the number of right-to-carry states has gone up sevenfold. These are among the most law-abiding folks, statistically, in the entire country. So they have the right to carry. They're among the most — you know, they do statistics on everything, right? Everything. And these are among the most — in fact, they're like at the top of the list. In Florida, for example, They've issued more than 3 million concealed carry permits in the past 30 years. Only 168 have been revoked. That's 0.006 percent. So very, very few and just no difficulty. Hillary wants to go into the opposite direction. She said that President Obama didn't go far enough when he executed this order, when he signed this order. And he's not going far enough. He's gone so far, he's gone too far, we're going to stop it. And we will unsign lots of different things, including some of those terrible executive orders. Believe me, they're going to be unsigned so fast, they'll be unsigned the first hour that I'm in office, in the first hour that I'm in office. Hillary's pledged to issue new anti-gun executive orders. You know that. This is the behavior, I mean, you could say of a dictator. This is the behavior of somebody, frankly, I think, that doesn't know what she's doing. She's not equipped to be president in so many different ways. But this is the thinking of a person that is not equipped to be the president of the United States. Believe me, she doesn't understand it. Bad judgment. We talk about it. She's got bad judgment. You know where it came from. came from me. It also came from his cur her current opponent, who's doing pretty well. I'll tell you, you talk about a rigged system. He wins every week, and he keeps losing. <laughs> I think Bernie should run as an independent, okay? Yeah. Let him run. <laughs> I do. I would love him to run as an independent. Then it would be the three of us on stage. I love that. The Second Amendment is on the ballot in November. 
The only way to save our Second Amendment is to vote for a person that you all know named Donald Trump, okay? I will tell you. I will never let you down. I will protect our Second Amendment. I will protect our country. Our military will be strong. Our borders will be enforced. We'll get rid of Common Core, which is a disaster. We'll bring, we'll bring education local. So important. Our education is a mess. We're going to get rid of Obamacare. We're going to have a great, great plan as a substitute. Obamacare is out of control. The new costs, as you know, they're going to be revealed on November 1st. They are going to be through the roof. And by the way, don't let this happen. We'll have to speak to Mitch. Obama is trying to get it delayed till after the election. The new costs will be revealed on November 1st, unless he gets it changed. And we don't want that to happen. They will be so astronomical, and it'll show what a total failure and disaster Obamacare is. We will repeal it, and we will replace it with something great, okay? Believe me. We're going to have strong borders, and we're going to make the greatest trade deals. Every country worldwide, every country in the world is ripping off our great country like we're children, like taking candy from a baby. Our trade deals will be renegotiated. We won't be having trade deficits of $500 billion a year with China anymore, folks. They won't be taking our jobs out of here and Kentucky and lots of other places, every place. They won't be taking our jobs and bringing them into Mexico, like with Nabisco, where they leave Chicago, moving to Mexico, and so many other countries, car companies, Carrier. You take a look at Carrier Air Conditioner, just left Indiana. They're leaving Indiana, they're moving to Mexico. That's not happening with me, because when they make their air conditioners and they sell them across our now very strong border, Believe me, they're going to pay a tax and they're going to say, we're not moving to Mexico anymore. It's so simple. It's so simple. So we're going to have... We're going to have great trade agreements. We're going to become a strong nation again. We're going to save our Social Security. We're going to save our Medicare. We're going to be so proud of this country. You're going to be proud of your president, but I don't care about that you're going to be proud of your country again. And we're going to start winning again, because we don't win anymore. We never win. We don't win on trade. We don't win with the military. We can't beat ISIS. Believe me, we're going to knock the hell out of ISIS. We have no choice. We're going to knock the hell out of ISIS. So, we are going to start winning again. And I have fun saying it, and I say it a lot, but there's nothing better. And some of you have heard it. But we are going to win, win, win. We're going to win with military. We're going to win at the borders. We're going to win with trade. We're going to win at everything. And some of you are friends. And you're going to call. You're going to say, Mr. President, please, we can't take it anymore. We can't win anymore like this. Mr. President, you're driving us crazy. You're winning too much. Please, Mr. President, not so much. And I'm going to say, I'm sorry. We're going to keep winning because we are going to make America great again. Thank you. We love you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Kentucky. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.